Uh, we're now at the Ron Regan Presidential Library. Here in Simi Valley, California. Beautiful, beautiful morning here in Simi Valley, California. Here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. Temperature's not quite what you expect for this first day of summer. The library is perched atop uh, a hill here. Kind of a hazy sunshine today, so you won't be able to see very far off into the distance. Welcome to the Oval Office. Someone once asked me how I felt on my first day in this room. Strange as it may seem, I was reminded of the eight years I spent as governor of California. There was the same staff meeting to begin the day, followed by a full schedule of appointments. I sat in the same chair I'd used in Sacramento. Most important of all, I found myself confronting an economic crisis reminiscent of the problems I had faced earlier as governor. But in other ways, it was all so different. Though I spent eight years in this office, I never thought of it as mine. I was just the latest temporary occupant in a long and distinguished line going back to Theodore Roosevelt. Earlier still, Queen Victoria presented the magnificent desk to President Rutherford B. Hayes. Crafted from the timbers of Her Majesty's ship, Resolute, it's an enduring symbol of Anglo-American friendship. While I love the desk, I must admit that it wasn't perfect. In fact, early in my term, carpenters had to raise the desk a couple of inches. It was either that, or I would have had to lower my knees. While every president puts his own stamp on the Oval Office, the cumulative weight of so much history is inescapable. One feels surrounded by illustrious predecessors, so much so, in fact, that out of respect for this office and the events which have transpired in it, I almost never removed my suit coat. Somehow, casual attire seemed out of place here. Of course, you can take your work seriously without taking yourself that way. Among the signs on the desk is one that reads, there is no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. Not a bad philosophy, especially in Washington, D.C., a city of tall monuments and even taller egos. For our friends in the press who place a high premium on accuracy, let me say, I did not actually hear George Washington say that. Friends, we did it. 
We weren't just marking time. We made a difference. We made the city stronger. We made the city freer. And we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all.